Now let us go to the fourth lecture of this second week and in this lecture I will talk a little bit more about Bravais lattices and I will introduce the concept of a lattice translation vector and then we will define the crystal in terms of lattices with a basis. So we will go to this uh, fourth lecture and after this lecture, the fifth lecture of the week will be uh, a review of the week and practice problems. So let us go to the lecture. So uh, I am going to be talking about Bravais lattices, bases and crystals. And uh, just to, we, we already saw what a Bravais lattice is in the previous lecture. Now let us look at the Bravais lattices that we see in, in three, three dimensions. And I will just quickly go through them. Okay. Uh, you can find these in any standard book. Okay. So I will not spend too much time on them, but, uh, but I will just, I'll just order them in a particular way. So there are 14 Bravais lattices in 3D. Okay. Now uh, if you classify based on the crystal system, you have uh, cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic. And Corresponding to these, there are Bravais lattices, which are there's a there's a set of cubic Bravais lattices. Okay, so let me let me show a typical cubic cell. So I'm just showing the unit cell for these cubic lattices, and I won't. Uh, so so these are the. So this is this is called primitive unit cell. Or we simply use the symbol P. Okay. Then you can have face centered unit cell, face centered cubic unit cell. where you have uh, all the atoms which are there in the primitive and in addition you have atoms at the face center. So at each of the face centers there is, I should emphasize points not atoms. So at this point at here they are, they refer to points. So you have points at the corners of the, of the cube and at the face centers of the cube and this corresponds to a face centered or we, we use the symbol F. Okay. You could also have a body centered cubic lattice. Okay. So you have a so you have a cube and you have points at the corners of the cube. And you have a point at the body center. And this is denoted by the symbol I. Okay, I, is, I uh, you use I for body centered because uh, because there is a there is a inversion center in the in the crystal. Okay. So these are the in the in the in the cubic you can have these types. So so in the cubic we saw that we can have these kinds of uh, lattices. Now what about the case of tetragonal? So in the case of tetragonal. Okay. The difference between a cube and a tetragonal cell is that in the tetragonal uh, one of the one of the dimensions, so one of this A, B, C is different. So if you look at a unit cell for a tetragonal lattice, you will have two of the dimensions be the same. So these two are A and a third dimension is slightly greater. 
So, so in this case you have a, a cuboid, but uh, what we see is that uh, two of the faces, two of the faces are squares and uh, four of the faces are rectangles. In, in a tetragonal, uh, if you have a tetragonal cell, you can have a primitive and you can have a body centered, you can have a body centered, so a body centered tetragonal lattice. And uh, these are the only two lattices, only two Bravais lattices that are possible for a tetragonal, for a for a tetragonal system. So, so there are only two tetragonal Bravais lattices: a primitive and a body centered. Now, you can ask why is there no face center in this case? And uh, you can easily see that uh, one of the criteria is that each lattice point should be identical, uh, identical to every other lattice point. So, all the lattice points should be identical. Now, if I put a face center, then you can clearly see that uh, an atom on this face will have, will have uh, these four atoms uh, or these four points that are clo closest to each other, whereas a point on this face will have these points and they are not, they are much further apart. So, it sees a different environment. So, in the case of tetragonal lattice, you can have primitive or body center, you cannot have uh, face center. What about, uh, what about the case of an orthorhombic? So, now in the case of orthorhombic, you have uh, all the three A, B, C are all distinct. Okay? And if, and if each of these are distinct, okay, then you can have, in this case, you can have uh, you can have the primitive as usual, have the you can have uh, in this case you can have a face center okay so the face centered orthorhombic uh, cell is also a bravais lattice You can have a face centered, you can also have a body center. Okay. And in addition, in the case of the orthorhombic lattice, okay, you have a fourth type of uh, type of lattice which uh, is referred to as a C center or a C face center. So, in this case only one of the faces is contains an uh, contains an extra point only 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 one or rather uh, two of the faces okay so these two faces this is called a c centered orthorhombic okay now this is there only in the case of the orthorhombic cell and uh, the reason it is there only in the case of the orthorhombic cell is that uh, or, or if you if you can ask the question the other way why is it not there in the case of a of a cubic cubic cell why don't you have a c c centered cube it turns out that uh, you can have a c centered cube but it will be identical to one of these other choices okay it will be it will be identical to to a to a primitive to a primitive uh, tetragonal cell so so it turns out to be identical to a primitive tetragonal cell okay so so that's the reason you don't have a c centered uh, in the case of a cube 
ok. But you can have it in the case of this uh, ortho orthorhombic cell. So, uh, what we notice right here is that uh, in the in the cubic or tetragonal and orthorhombic you have a total of 7 or you have a total of uh, 4 plus 2 plus 3 that is 9, 9 Bravais lattices. So, 9 out of 14 lattices are already represented in this. So, uh, there are only a total of 14 Brave lattices in 3D and 9 of them can be got by just uh, by just stretching a cube. So, you take a cube and you, stre you stretch it in one direction, you get a tetragonal cell, you stretch it in two directions, you get an orthorhombic cell. Okay. What about the remaining phi? So, what do the remaining phi look like? So, uh, we can we can see this. So, there are two that are uh, referred to as triclinic and monoclinic ok. So, so in this case the triclinic case you can uh, in this case uh, all the sides and all the all the angles are, are distinct. So, you have I should show it a little elongated. And uh, just to show that the angles so in the case of triclinic, you can only have a primitive triclinic, so you can only have a primitive triclinic. So, uh, this is triclinic where you have A, B and C and all the angles none of the angles are 90 degrees. In the case of the of the monoclinic monoclinic cell now uh, the unit cell for monoclinic uh, is uh, has the characteristic that uh, two of the angles are, are uh, 90 degrees ok and uh, one of the angles is not 90 degrees. So, uh, in this case you can uh, you can you can show it in this uh, in this manner. So, So, essentially I am choosing I am choosing this angle as 90 degrees, I am choosing this angle as 90 degrees and uh, additionally I am choosing one of these angles as 90 degrees. So, uh, for example, I could take this angle as 90 degrees ok. And uh, in this case uh, you can have either a primitive monoclinic or you can also have a C centered monoclinic, you can also have a C centered monoclinic or C centered. You cannot have a face centered or a body centered ok, that would not be a Bravais lattice ok, but you can have a C centered monoclinic Bravais lattice ok. So, uh, so there are three more that are done here. Okay, so we we had nine which were which were uh, based on stretching of a cube, and then there are three more which are due to triclinic and monoclinic. In mo in mo monoclinic, you have the primitive and the C centered. Okay, and uh, finally you have two more. Okay, which uh, one of them is called a trigonal hexagonal P and a trigonal R. Okay, and uh, these you can get them from. Uh, from a hexagonal cell ok. So, so, so these are both related to the hexagonal. So, uh, the hexagonal cell looks like this. So, you have a regular hexagon and and you have uh, another regular hexagon here.
and they are Okay, so this is the the hexagonal, and uh, here here the this is referred to as a trigonal hexagonal or a hexagonal P. Okay, and uh, you can understand it by looking at uh, this as a unit cell. So we choose this as a unit cell, even though uh, even though it uh, it doesn't seem to the cell itself does not have the have the six fold symmetry that is there in a hexagon in the in a in a hexagonal cell but uh, this is a cell that uh, that is used okay and here you can see that uh, that the angle between these two is exactly 60 degrees okay so this angle is exactly 60 degrees okay so uh, this is the trigonal hexagonal p it is primitive in this in this sense the other other uh, interesting bravais lattice and this is the last bravais lattice okay that uh, that we have is what is called the trigonal r or uh, it's also again again you can get this from the hexagon from the hexagonal cell so we have exactly the same as the primitive hexagonal cell but you have some additional points okay so and what are these what are those additional points so in addition to these okay you have some additional points and where are the additional points okay so these are these are what are called the r centers okay and uh, again i won't uh, discuss this in the too much detail here okay but uh, basically you can show that they should be they will be uh, they are they are located somewhere around, uh, around here there is a point okay. there are very very specific points and then there is uh, there are two points that are located here and there is another point and there is a fourth point that is located along this line so the way the way this uh, this turns out to be a bravais lattice is if you if you look at the points in the following sense okay so you look at this this Oh, maybe maybe I should use a different color. Let me just draw it again. And uh, let me show it somewhere around here. So now now uh, the R hex hexagon, the R hexagonal cell. Can be our hexagonal lattice can be obtained from the hexagonal lattice okay through the following through the following points so you consider okay i'll just mark these in light blue you consider this point you consider a point located here there is a third point located in the front edge okay so this is the edge on the on the front face and uh, there is a fourth point okay this is also located on the front face right here okay and uh, so you form the cell in this in this manner and then you need four more points and those points are located here here and you have two more points so one is located on this face this 
and uh, that's it. And you have one more that will be located right along uh, along this face. So that will be located right here. So uh, this, so it's a it's a hexagonal cell with these four additional points, okay, uh, and uh, these four, uh, effectively each of them, so so it it actually has six additional points, okay, but uh, each of them contribute only uh, only one sixth, so uh, each of them contribute one third, so it's a this is called an R centered hexagon, or it's called a trigonal R. So this can be obtained from the hexagonal cell, okay. And uh, this is the fourteenth Bravais lattice, okay. So there are there are total of fourteen Bravais lattices in three D. And uh, let's just refresh. So nine of them you can get uh, from taking a cube and uh, stretching it by keeping the angles at ninety degrees. The five of them you can get from this uh, monoclinic cell. And uh, uh, from this triclinic and in terms of triclinic and monoclinic, and the last two we explain in terms of the of the hexagonal cell. Okay. Now uh, you have a maximum of fourteen possible Bravais lattices in three D, and uh, it is uh, you can you can take any lattice, okay, any regular arrangement of points where each point looks identical will fall into one of these fourteen lattices. And uh, remember, the criterion is that uh, every point should have the same environment, same arrangement, and orientation around it. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, lattice translation vectors. Okay. And uh, so these are the these refer to these refer to the translation vectors of the unit cell. So, for example, what we have been talking about A, B, C. Okay. So these are the translation vectors. Okay, of this uh, of this lattice, okay, and by combinations of these translation vectors, we can generate all the all the points. Okay, so uh, again, just to emphasize, so we had a, a Bravais lattice point written as n one a n one a plus n two b plus n three c. Okay. So uh, what what is R? R is a vector from one lattice point. So we said n1, n2, n3 are integers. And that means they can be zero, plus minus one, plus minus two, etc. Now you can have uh, so uh, what we said is that the set of all n1, n2, n3 will generate the entire lattice. So uh, if we have if we have let us say n 1 equal to n 2 equal to n 3 equal to 0, you will get uh, let us say the origin of that okay. and uh, let us mark out uh, our uh, translation vectors. So, if we have a b b and uh, let us say c okay. then uh, if you take n 1 equal to 1 n 2 and n 3 are 0, then you will get this point. If you take n 2 equal to 1, n 1 and n 3 are 0, you will get this point. If you take n 3 equal to 1, n 2 and n 1 are 0, you will get this point. Okay. And now, now if I take n 1 equal to 2, then I will get a next point n 1 equal to 2, n 2 and n 3 are 0, I will get a whole set of points. So, so if I keep n 2 and n 3 equal to 0, I will get a whole set of points okay. and notice that this vector this r is a vector that that uh, that goes from this origin which is also a Bravais lattice point to some other point okay. Now uh, suppose I take n 1 equal to 1, n 2 equal to 1, n 3 equal to 0 okay. then you can see that I uh, will get a plus b which will give me this point. So, so this point the translation vector is A plus B. What about uh, this, this one the translation vector is 
2 a ok this is 3 a and so on. What about this point? This point is 2 a plus b ok. So, this this translation vector is 2 a plus b and uh, you can see you can you can put the c dimension also I am not showing this, but essentially what you can show is that uh, with these translation vectors they are essentially lines that join one point on the Bravais lattice to, to other points ok. And uh, now uh, let us look at the primitive translation vectors this uh, a, b and c ok. So, this uh, uh, a, b and c are uh, are the primitive translation vectors. Now, uh, if you just take a, b and c a and I had b and if I take c ok. Now, if I imagine that I construct a volume using a, b and c using these three vectors I construct some sort of volume so this is a general parallelopiped that we have been using so far to represent unit cells okay so this unit cell that we have this parallelopiped okay now uh, If you are asked what is the volume of this parallelopiped ok, what is the volume of this parallelopiped ok that corresponds to this unit cell. So, the volume can be expressed in terms of a, b and c as a dot b cross c or it is a scalar triple product ok. This is called the scalar triple product. And uh, basically, if you have if you have three translation vectors a, b, and c, then the volume of this unit cell can be expressed in terms of a scalar triple product of a, b, and c. Okay. Now, uh, the next concept that uh, that we'll be using very uh, very uh, frequently is that of fractional coordinates ok. So, what are fractional coordinates? So, now suppose I ask you the coordinate of, of uh, this point ok. So, this point is 2a is the x coordinate or rather rather if I ask if I ask the coordinates of any point ok. Now, then what you have to do is to you have to convert this vector into Cartesian coordinates you have to convert the vector 2a plus b into Cartesian coordinates ok and you will get the coordinates of that point. But uh, it turns out that it is much more convenient to use fractional coordinates uh, that are defined as follows. So, suppose you have a point 2a plus b ok. So, this in fractional coordinates it becomes 2 1 2 1 and uh, 0 ok. So, so the 0 is the c coordinate. So, so I could have written this as 2 a plus b plus 0 c. So, this is equivalent to equivalent to 2 a plus b plus 0 c ok. So, this is represented by 2 1 0 in coordinate in this uh, fractional coordinate system and actually actually they are they are fractions if I if I want to write the coordinate of any point inside this unit cell within the unit cell ok. So, suppose I want to take a point that is uh, let us say here this is let me show it in red. So, this point ok this point uh, in red will have fractional coordinates half 0 0. So, it is along the a a vector ok and uh, it, it is half of the entire distance. So, this will have coordinates half 0 0 ok. Similarly, 
a point that is uh, let us say it is located here will have uh, fractional coordinates 0, 0, half. So, it is located along the c direction. So, the a, a component is uh, 0, okay, but uh, c component is half, a and b components are 0. So, these fractional coordinates are actually fairly useful. Okay. And uh, in the case of uh, they are most useful for cubic uh, cells, cubic or uh, cubic tetragonal or orthorhombic cell when, when, when each of these vectors are mutually perpendicular, but they can also be used for other cells. Okay. So, uh, now let us we have been talking about uh, lattices. Okay. Now, a crystal formally consists of both a lattice and a basis. So, a crystal is a combination of a lattice and a basis. Okay. Now, uh, what, what we want to emphasize here is that your lattice is just a set of points, arrangement of points. in space and the basis is uh, the what is at each point. So, for example, let me illustrate this in, uh, in 2D. Okay. So, uh, suppose you have a lattice that looks let us consider the triangular lattice. in 2D. So, if I have a lattice and now let me put a basis. So, so on each of these I can put some object okay. and uh, some object. Okay. So, let me put uh, just to show something extreme, I'll put uh, I'll put one uh, one green dot and a red dot. So I'll put both these on each side. Okay. So then my crystal looks like this. So I have on each of these sides I have a red and a blue dot. Okay, and I can extend this. Okay, so, I can extend this every all over and I will get my crystal. So, I will first do for the red dots and then I will do for the green dots. Okay, so, this becomes my crystal. Okay, so, the crystal consists of uh, some basis and some lattice. Okay. And uh, now, now, this basis can be either uh, an atom. So, 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 basis can be an atom or a group of atoms. So, so, so you might put one atom or you might put a whole set of atoms, you might put a pair of atoms and so on. And uh, what is to be noted is that, uh, is that the basis actually changes the symmetry of the crystal. Okay. So, now uh, if you see the triangular lattice that has a, I mean it, it has a six fold axis. Okay. So, so, so if you rotate it by 60, 60 degrees you get the same thing. But if you take this and rotate it by 60 degrees. Okay, the crystal you won't get the same thing because the the basis is actually forcing it is giving it a direction. So the basis actually changes the symmetry of the crystal. Okay, and uh, what is important is that uh, crystal systems are based on symmetry of crystal. Okay, so, the crystal systems are based on the symmetry of the crystal of the of the overall crystal symmetry and uh, this depends on both the lattice and the basis. Okay, it depends on both the lattice and the basis and uh, 
sometimes we choose the so the shape of unit cell might have different symmetry or actually I should say the shape of unit cell that itself does not decide crystal symmetry. Okay. So, if you had a crystal like, like this, this crystal, okay, its symmetry is not, is not that of a triangular lattice. Okay, it is it is very different. It will it, it has a very different symmetry than a triangular lattice. Okay, that that is one important key thing to keep in mind. So the symmetry of the lattice and the crystal might be entirely different. Okay, now let's take one example of a diamond crystal. Okay, and uh, this will just illustrate my point about uh, about lattice and a basis. So a diamond crystal, okay, can be thought of as uh, FCC with two atom bases. Okay, so, I uh, will just show it quickly. So, you have a diamond, so you take an FCC So, this is your FCC crystal, but you put a two atom basis. So, you put one out here at uh, let us let us start with uh, one of the corners. So, you put one at a corner and the next one you put along the body diagonal at one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. So, if I take, so I put quarter of the way along the body diagonal. So, it will be located somewhere here. Okay, th this will be inside the cell. Okay, one fourth along the body diagonal. So let me slightly. Okay, then uh, what I'm going to do is to take take this body diagonal and and put one one fourth along the way. Okay, and uh, there is a prescription that. Uh, okay, so uh, so what I want to say. Let me let me show this in a different color. So, uh, if you put one along one fourth along this body diagonal, then uh, you have to put along one fourth of the next body diagonal. Okay. So, now uh, let me take another body diagonal that is this and uh, here I will put one one fourth along this side. Okay. And then uh, and then you will take a third body diagonal that is let us say this way and you put one fourth along this side and you take a fourth body diagonal that is this and you will put uh, one fourth along this. Okay. Now, uh, I, I specifically chose these four and you can actually generate the same thing. Okay. So, it is one fourth along the body diagonal. So, four of these uh, what are known as tetrahedral voids. Okay. So, uh, but you can also think of it as you take this FCC and at each point you put two atoms. So, so I will just, I'll just illustrate this and then so at each point you put these two atoms. Okay. Then you have uh, make my FCC. Okay. So, what I am thinking of it is, uh, is as an FCC with a two atom basis. So, so at uh, instead of putting one point at the corner, I put one at the corner and one at uh, you know one fourth, one fourth, one fourth along this direction. So, now at this point if I put one fourth, one fourth, one fourth it will go outside the cell. 
okay so we don't uh, i mean it will be in the neighboring cell okay now if i take this point then the 1 4th 1 4th 1 4th will correspond to this and that is exactly the point that we showed here in this blue color okay and you can you can again show that uh, that uh, all the points on the top face okay they will go the the second point will be on the neighboring cell okay so so in this case it will be here okay so all these will be outside the cell similarly similarly for all uh, these points they will go outside to the neighboring cell but if you take this point this face center okay the second point will be along uh, along this body diagonal okay so it will be somewhere here okay and in this way you can show that if you take each fcc point and you put this two atom basis you will generate the diamond crystal so this is an example of a of a uh, so so if you take this as the basis and you put this unit on each of the points of the fcc lattice you will get a diamond crystal okay so i'll conclude uh, this lecture here and uh, in the next class i will talk about uh, i'll, I'll we will we'll, uh, we'll summarize what we did in this week and then we'll do a few practice questions thank you